Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about working with Linux. In this tutorial we're going to take a look on how to install our super sweet and really important command line application in order to save us a lot of time and a lot of stress if we accidentally delete a file because that could happen even if we're super careful. So right now, if you're working on the terminal like I do like pretty much every day and you accidentally delete something with the built-in command remove, that file is completely deleted and erased from your system. There's no way you can revert it back or uh, regain the access to that file. It's really kind of impossible. So for example, if we access the terminal, and let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better, we access our terminal and we access a folder, like for example, sites. Here we list all the sites. We have a couple of folders, awesome and ladder test. If for example, I create a file called, uh, uh, yeah, let's say index.html. Now I have this file. I decide that I want to remove it. I don't need it anymore. So by default in terminal, you just type RM and then the name of the file that you want to remove. If we hit enter now, this file is deleted, but this file, it's completely erased from our system. It's not present in our uh, trash, it's not present in any other folder. It We cannot recover this file, so it's completely gone. And that works exactly the same for uh, remove directory. So if we create a directory, for example, yeah, let's say, let's make a directory called AWPS. So now we have that directory. If we type remove dear AWPS and we need enter, also that directory is completely gone and we cannot get that back. That's okay if you don't really care about those files, but it's kind of dangerous, especially if you access some uh, fundamental folders of your system. If you access like your thinkering in the folders of your uh, user root or some applications that you don't really want to accidentally deal with the file in order to not break everything. So let me show you a pretty sweet and interesting solution that I found many years ago and I keep using every day. It's called a trash CLI and is just simply an interface that when you delete, when you use it to delete a file, it actually moves it to the trash bin or to the trash folder. It doesn't really delete the file, so it's so easy to recover and it doesn't permanently delete the file, so it's so safe. It's really easy to install it, we can do it directly via npm and install it globally on our machine. And the good thing is that it works on macOS, Linux and Windows, so it's multi-platform and you should definitely use it every time you can. So let's copy this npm command and let's paste it in our terminal. Let's hit enter. We got an error and we got also a message that, oh, there's a new version of NPN. But of course the error is because we didn't use sudo because we cannot install globally something in our like root folder if we don't use sudo. So with sudo, we shouldn't get the error and that's perfect. Our package is installed. So if we try again and we say here we have a bunch of files, perfect. Let's make a dear AWPS. Instead of using remove now, let's use trash and then AWPS. Hit enter. And here DSH tries to fix our issue because it doesn't recognize the trash as a proper command name. So I said, you want to type this? I said, no. Automatically, a trash gets executed and removes the folder that is not here anymore. We don't have anymore the AWPS folder that we had before. But if we access our trash bin, trash folder, look what we have here the AWPS folder that we can easily restore and easily recover. So this is great. And of course, Trash works also for files. So if we create a file like we did before, index.html, and we have that file. Now if we say Trash index.html, hit enter. Now the file is not there anymore, but we have it in our Trash. So that's perfect. The thing that I don't like though is that I don't want to type every time trash. I like to use remove and I would like to also rem use remove to remove the directory without typing remove dear. So let's just simply use the super helpful dshrc file to define an alias and use trash instead of remove. So let's do the usual dsh config. Let's type enter. Now we are inside our dshrc file. If we scroll down where we define some 
aliases here right at the bottom. There you go. We have our JSH config. Perfect. Let's define another alias by saying that if we use remove, the remove is actually trash. Let's save it with control O and tap enter and let's close it with control X. Perfect. Now let's source again the DSHRC, otherwise it won't work. Perfect. Now let's create a directory called, uh, let's say again, yeah, AWPS. That's perfect. Let's list. Yes, we have it here. Let's use the remove AWPS that by default shouldn't work because remove it doesn't apply to folders, but only to files. But we should write remove dear. We wrote the alias. So if we type enter, Perfect, no error messages. Let's access our trash and let's see if we have that here. Perfect, the AWPS folder that we just used the remove command was moved into the trash. So it can be easily restored. We're not actually deleting permanently everything and we're way safer to use the remove command that is actually the alias for the trash common line application. And we can be pretty sure that we're not gonna mess up our entire system if we accidentally remove something. So this was a super quick video to show you something really important in terms of terminal commands. And of course, this is just a simple example. Uh, we installed the ZSH and home IZ shell in previous videos, you should really check all the plethora of plugins that come with all these super quick and nice commands that you can use in your terminal to just speed up with your workflow and maybe solve some issue that you encounter every day. So it's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.